Welcome to Fans of the Forge Season 5, Episode 17 Recap, The Glaive Guizarm, or something like that. Something like that, for sure. All right, I'm Sean. We got Chris over here. What up? No, Teresa. She's at camp. She's camping. But she gave us her picks. We got her picks. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and uh, so let's, let's start it off here. We have Nick, who has 25 years of part-time experience. Then we have Dwight, big guy, big guy, big for guy. Sure. Nine years of part-time experience. Brian with seven years of part-time experience, and Alex with four years of full-time experience, and he's a full-time tattoo artist. So how does that work? If you're full-time bladesmith and full-time tattoo uh, artist, well, I, I guess if unless that's just you're a tattoo artist, you got some downtime. Yeah, I suppose for the most part, unless you're really popular and you're booked up, but. You can do whatever you want, really. You're your own boss. That's true. That's true. Well, unless he doesn't have his own shop. Well. And you're booking people for him. Who, who cares? We don't, it doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> Why did you bring that up? Anyway, <laughs> so let's move on to the picks. So I picked and Chris picked Nick. Yep. Uh, going with the experience there. Well, it's kind of a stacked deck. I mean, he's it's got 25, big, 25 years, years versus the next guy is nine and then seven and four. It's just... Right. That's a big gap. Yeah. Um, so, although, I mean, looking at the guy, you're like, I, this guy this guy makes blades? Like, <laughs> like, I figured he's just like a computer programmer or something like that. He just didn't really fit He's the, a geologist, he said. Yeah, right? yeah, there's something like that. Yeah. yeah. That I would see. I could see. Yeah, he said that it would give him some kind of um, a little bit of advantage material wise because he knows like minerals and stuff like that. For uh, geology. I I don't know about that. <laughs> Only because listen, just use the just say it's because of your twenty five years of experience <laughs> doing this that you know stuff about metal. You should by this point. I don't think mineral knowledge is going to help you with no like in, in this competition. I mean, really no. overall too. I, whatever. Okay, fine. Forget. It. Anyway, uh, then Brian, you and Teresa, Teresa, this was your underdog pick. Yep, Brian, yep. Okay. And then Alex was my underdog pick and Teresa's pick. Right. No one picked Dwight, but Dwight came right out and said he's 90% confident that he was going to win. That he's going to win. Like, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm 90% confident. I was like, all right, man. <laughs> Yeah, how did that work out for you, for you buddy? Well, but we'll see. We'll find see. out. Let's see. Maybe he wins. <laughs> yeah, who who knows at this He's point? He's an imposing figure. I'm not going to say shit to his face. So, no, absolutely no, not. And no. Uh, no, so let's get into round. Let's one. get into yeah. round one. All right, so um, they're not forging a blade in their signature style. No, they are being asked to make a K bar fighting knife mm -hmm. once again. Just like they did for the that was the, the um, Memorial Day episode they did that or was that was that a K bar or was that something else? It was similar. Oh, that was Naval Cutlass, right? They made a Naval Cutlass as the final. Oh, that's um, the final. Yeah, they made a K bar this season. I'm pretty sure, unless I mixed up an episode that I watched from seasons past. But I, I thought it was. Yeah. I I do recall a K bar, but I don't remember it being necessarily something they had to make. I can't remember what it was now. No, they did. I, I know I've seen them make a K-Bar. I'm, I'm sure. sure they have, yeah. Anyway, so what was weird was, you know, uh, Will lays out parameters, and he says, are there any questions? And then, <laughs> uh, who 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 did it? Is it Brian? Brian. Brian's like, yeah, what metal are we using? Like, where's the oh, metal? Oh, yeah, what's our metal? And he's like, oh, and he pulls a, his little cape back or whatever the hell you call it. Well, they had a double reveal. Yeah, it was, was a double it? reveal. So there's the K-bar, whoosh, like, oh, look, K-bar. And then it's like, well, here's the melody you got to work with, whoosh. There's little cubes of double uh, W1 steel, one by one cubes of W1. Yep. Okay. It was just a weird I mean, intro. Hey, it was solid metal, and it was a particular type of metal, so compared to some of the other challenges they've had recently, it was actually probably way easier for them to be able to get this shit to work. I mean, compared to springs or oh, yeah, rusty, rusty nuts and bolts. Yeah. And Clean your nuts. <laughs> yeah, all that good Whatever. stuff. Whatever. Anyway, uh, but there's still small cubes. They're going to have to weld some together. 
in small blocks yeah. and then try to forge those together yep. to make a billet. And so that's what they did. I mean, because what else are you going to do? So um, Alex, uh, when during his process, he, what did he say? He hearkened his back to his mom or something like no, that. his wife. His wife. About he's, sniffing shit. He said his wife sniffs everything yeah. that she picks up. So he's around sniffing the, the flux and stuff like multiple times. You show him sniffing flux. I don't think that was multiple times. I think that was, one, think was time one time and repeated. it was the same shot repeated. Because I watched yeah. that scene a few times in, in going through the episode yesterday and today. And uh, it definitely looked like the exact same shot a few times just repeated. Yeah, because why would he keep sniffing the flux? Yeah, you sniff it once. And then he said it smelled like it nothing. It smelled like nothing. Right. So if it smelled like nothing, why are you going to keep smelling Ryan's it? Ryan's like, well, what did it smell like? He said, nothing. Case closed. Yeah. Uh, has he never smelled flux before? I guess not. Man, I, are there see. different types? I don't know. Who he can... made a joke about making his own flux, and I didn't know oh, if that right. was supposed to be a dirty joke or if that's a real thing. Mm, I don't know about, enough about... Well, I think uh, someone told us during an interview that I think it was borax or something like that. For flux, really? Yeah. Oh. What's I don't borax know. borax-based? Eh. Anyway. It doesn't matter, really. Uh, anyway, something else they threw in the show. Okay. Yes. Um... And then he did some multiple heat treats, which uh, was was cool, I guess. And then, well, he had to do it because he the first heat treat it was not hard enough, so he had to go back yeah. in. That's why he had to go back in a couple times. And um, Brian had some crazy delaminations when he was. I think he just made a big block. Yeah, he made. He one did, He really didn't do. He one. did one. He welded all his cubes together. He didn't do multiple stacks. He just welded one together. And when he was hammering it out, that thing on the edges especially was, you know, busting apart. Oh, yeah. Starting to fan out on them. Um, and then somehow in, in the midst of all this, a bromance was born <laughs> between Alex and Brian. And they acknowledged it. And they were, like, talking to each other and helping each other. And the and judges were all about yeah. the bromance. And, and then at one point, Brian lifts up his, like, sunglasses and is looking at Alex and he, Alex is like oh my god <laughs> that was a funny point that was good that was pretty good um, and then so Dwight is doing his thing and uh, he starts to get a little overheated and judges say yeah you know or Will says you know one thing you never s can really understand on the show is that how hot it is you know standing in front of the forge how hot it gets in here and then Dwight gets overheated. He's standing against the wall, and then medics come over, and they decide to pull him from the competition. Yeah, so other people in the past have overheated and taken a break. So they must be checking his vitals and things like that and seeing some sort of warning sign that would make them pull him compared to some of the other people that I mean, had to, like, take a break. You I know? saw the EMT, like, check his pulse. Yeah. They didn't show much of anything else. I, so I don't know. There's... Maybe a little bit more to it. Well, I do sure. know that he actually commented today on the Facebook group because people were, like, hoping that he was all right. Oh, yeah. And he said, yeah, he was fine afterwards and there was no major issues or anything. So it just was a case of a little bit guess, too much heat and stress on the body for him. And so I, I don't know why they he didn't just sit down or whatever. Yeah, so there had to be – I'm just thinking there's something else maybe a little – extra that went on they didn't show fine we know from experience they don't go into detail no a lot of this stuff in the show because there's a limited amount of time yeah they're just showing you the important part he got removed by the medic he's gone yeah and then there's a an overdub later on recording of will well don't just think that because someone was pulled that you can't like you still don't have to finish your blade fully it's like yeah no shit sherlock yeah. like, we know this everyone knows this still have to meet your parameters right, you still gotta meet the blade parameters and so you know the whole different <laughs> voice and stuff because it's in a studio whatever all right fine so then we move on to nick nick he admitted that he's kind of clumsy and he was dropping his his billet and, and his blade oh, yeah and, and um his blade shape was kind of oval it didn't really look like k-bar judges mentioned that during while, while he was making it um and then he uh he liked to work on a floor a little bit he was sitting on the floor and like a piece of cardboard like you know carving his shit out with the grinder yeah yeah interesting guy 
I guess when you work at rocks, stuff happens. <laughs> you like I to be know. on the ground, digging at the ground. Yeah, so I guess whatever. it makes sense. So moving on to judging, um, they got some minor surface defects. Uh, I think they mentioned the shape. Yeah, the and, shape was a little old, right. like you said. Didn't really look like a K-bar. Um, for Brian, they said he had uh, some you know bad delaminations and cracks at the tang. Um, and Alex had a very large blade, and there was a warp. And he had some like three deep cracks, but they all move on round two. Yeah, they all met the parameters, so they could move on. And right, nothing was completely horrible. So even though they go out of their way to insist that you have to make sure you meet right. all the parameters, you don't necessarily make it to the next round. They all made it. They, they all know. So round two, they had to finish the K bars by doing a traditional handle that the K bar had. Which oh is yeah, another uh, twist in this whole K bar. They had to yeah. specifically make a certain type of Yeah, handle. it was a stacked leather handle. So slices of leather stacked up along the tang, and you have to cut out the hole for the tang in each individual piece to right. get it to fit properly. So it's a lot of time that goes into that. They also had to have a uh, guard and a hammer pommel on the end of it. And they also still, if they hadn't met the K-bar shape, they had to fix the blade to make right. the proper shape of the K-bar to to f meet the requirements. That was something that they specifically said. It has to look like a K-bar when you're done. So, Brian was the one that had the weakest looking blade out of all of them. He had some major, major delamination cracks right. that need to be fixed. So, he welded on some additional material to the back edge of his uh, spine of his blade so that he could then grind that down and hopefully once it was welded on have that reinforce the spine of the blade right he also at one point had to bend the blade to align properly with the tang for this the judges made a point of of saying that that it was a that was a common method to to fix this that particular issue but i still wasn't 100 percent sure what the problem was with it yeah although i'm I don't know. I feel like I've heard like some things out of line before. I don't really understand how, whatever. Yeah. They do, and they try to fix it. And the only other thing I noted for Brian was that time was running out. He couldn't get the epoxy to work out, so he opened up a bottle of super glue and just dumped it all yeah. over the leather once he had Will the shape. that extremely hilarious. Yeah, he was dying laughing, and Jay Nielsen's like, that's not going to seep in. That's just on the surface. Like, right. if he grinds that down from there... It's just, it's not going to make a difference at all. Um, but that's that's what he did. Hey, and hey. Try what you can. Yeah, when you're running out of time and you have to get the handle done, you do what you can. Alex, he could not fix the cracks that he had in his blade based on what he knew how to do. He could right. he identified that they were just not fixable in their current state, but he did know of a method where if you were to torch temper the spine of the blade it would allow it to be a little more rigid in that area so that if something were to happen with one of those cracks, it would allow for a little bit of spring back and, and possibly holding the blade together a little stronger um, during testing. Well, that that wouldn't that soften the, the spine a little bit to kind of give it That's some... That's what I mean, soften yeah, the spine, yeah, not, har not it harden give. it. So he torch tempered that, and they had some of their, <laughs> some of their favorite drama. He had set his epoxy... And he had the wrong size pin, and then he didn't pre-fit pre the pin, so he just grabs like pin stock, and it, oh look, it doesn't go through. Like, so he's got to run around, and why wouldn't you do that? You would think you'd why fit it you, first. Okay, drill the hole, and then oh, I'll just grab that that pin stock later once I glue all my shit together <laughs> and see if it fits. Just no, man, you drill it. You you got to know what size hole you got to drill anyway, so. It should have. I don't understand how there was that much of an issue unless he just he grabbed a piece of something that he, that was the wrong piece. But lo and behold, know. he went and he found the right size pin well, immediately. No, not exactly because he went to the grinder. You started grinding. Oh, roll it on. He there. did. He had to grind it a little bit. But hey, ta-da! It fits. It, he got it to work. Yeah. And then Nick, they made a point to say he's working very slow and he's and they showed he how was. Slow. he was going really slow <laughs> you know the last hour he had he had he just spent, kind of finished his blade up yeah he spent like 2 hours just shaping that blade on the grinder 
Yeah, to fix it. I mean, he had a lot of work to do to fix yeah. it, so it made sense. But then when it came to doing his handle, he was rushing because he had no time he left. He had no time. I didn't think he had an hour. Like at, By that like point, yeah. 30 minutes like left, and he was like, oh, I need to you know, get at this handle. So he went balls to the wall with getting his um, handle done. <laughs> but he didn't use power tools. He used... He got he got the leather cut. He got all that stacked and got on it stacked there. Stacked on, and then he used a razor knife to cut <laughs> it to used, shape. He, he just used a utility knife, and he's just like hacking at it. And you're like, why? Are, why is he doing it that way? The grind, like, why is he doing it? The that grinder way? would have easily done all that in probably a tenth of the time. It was it right. would have just like and you burned got all through these it. Just shit pieces of leather. It did not look great. You yeah, expect afterwards. someone to hold that? And no, man. No. What were you doing? But. <laughs> <laughs> they all finished, yeah. and so it brought them to testing. It was a paint can chop and stab, and Nick went up first. He had a few little chips in his edge, nothing too bad. Brian was second, and he, they did the stabs first. That went well, and then during the chops, his blade just just broke right at the tang it and just, just bent straight folded back. <laughs> folded back it was nasty it was a really bad break and uh i think there was a little bit of a of a disappointed doug cam. uh yeah yeah i wrote i wrote doug cam on that because it it shot it got right on doug and he, he didn't look too happy yeah and then alex they said you know just because he his broke doesn't mean you get a pass so yes. they had to tell still me test something it, I don't know. <laughs> this is the fifth season, guys. I think everybody understands how it works <laughs> right. by now. So they test Alex, and Alex's has no problems. It's a little bit of minor chipping, but right. nothing major. So because of the catastrophic failure that Brian had, he got the boot. He was out, and that was my and Teresa's underdog pick went out the door. So do you know what this means? What is it means it? I'm getting some points somehow because oh, Nick is in it. Shit. Alex and is in Alex it. Alex so is I'm getting it. points some some way somehow. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Everybody's still got some some dogs in the game here, yeah. so uh, we could see how this pans out. Okay, here we go. Final round. The Glaive Guisarm. 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 I, I, something like that. I don't know. So is it has it, to. It was a French weapon, right? Is yeah, it was kind of European. It was French, French style weapon. Yeah, um, and it had to be twenty six to twenty eight inches in length. Yep, the the, the blade, blade part. part with two langets and a back spike. Mm -hmm. And I believe they said it was used. It was a long range weapon used to you know pull dudes from horseback and all sorts of shit. You know, is similar to some of the other style of pole arm weapons that they've done this right. season. So it's a very similar application. All in all meant to kill. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <been> the key. <laughs> so uh they go over to Nick's forge and uh he's got a homemade coal forge. It looks a little a little primitive. Looks like something we could do. It looks like something we would build <laughs> and <laughs> for twenty five years of part time experience. Hey man Living a dream. Whatever works. I don't know, man. Whatever works. So, you know, he's got this thing. He's got a fan on it. But the fan's not feeding enough air into this thing because he's got a big piece of steel to heat up. So what's he do? He says, you know what? The only other thing that I have that's got a bigger motor is my shop vac. So he hooks up the discharge pipe into the, the forge, and he gets that thing roaring. Oh, yeah. it was uh, That was impressive, yeah, that was shop good. vac. Um, there was something else I had also noted, but I didn't put on our board here, was that uh, once he had everything going together, he was going to forge weld the socket portion that was going to be, go onto the spear handle right. um, to the blade itself. But he made a point to say that I don't forge weld often. I've only done it a few times. <laughs> yeah, In 25 right. years, <laughs> I was... Uh, Hey, uh, I guess he just makes steak knives. I don't know. <laughs> just out of one piece and throws us some handle material on it. Hey, all right, man. But in the end, he didn't really have any major no, issues. Nothing, nothing big really happened there. And he was, you know, he went and tested it. He went, chopped a little bit of a tree branch with it and 
ended with it will prune. Yeah. So it will prune. They showed they had like a weird shot like after that was done like him like holding it going up the steps to his front like door. Like the front door like, <laughs> with it in his hand. Maybe it's like the other guy that was on one of the previous know. episodes that brought the every blade in the house with oh. him to imbue it with soul. I I don't know. And it, well if then they start off with him in his house and you see like clutter and like kids toys and shit and he's like going through like his he's grabbing like cardboard or drawn and stuff oh yeah it's kind of okay i don't know yeah is that all he can get for this whole thing well know. you know what he put he put a good we- weapon he, he, together yeah so there's not much to show uh yeah. so anyway alex uh because of the size of the blade he had to use he had to take two forges Stick them together. Yeah, he had the propane forges, yeah. so it was like two smaller propane forges. Yeah, little rectangle boxes. Um, oh, he used that for heat treat. Um, when he used the forge, who cares? Oh, no, no, he had. To, well, yeah, he didn't have. He didn't need two. That though, was for he? quenching it. The heat yeah. treating and the quenching. So I don't. I don't. He must have only been using one. I think when no. he was doing the the main part, but he needed to have. Um, I think he, he oh, did a similar he, thing with the he socket. Had a, he had two, did he have two torches, too? Or was that a different episode? That was a different episode. That was a <laughs> different episode. damn it. Yeah. So it's all, all right. blending together. He put fire to metal, and then he made a blade out of it. <laughs> all right. So then uh, he, he, when he was quenching, he had like a little bit of oil fire going on. And he's like, I can't put this out. And then, then he's, he shows him. Like, he takes it out of the, the oil, and he's, like, looking at it. Meanwhile, there's, there's a fire going <laughs> just, on behind him. Just burning. Just going. And he's like, oh, I picked up a warp, and it's too cool. I can't fix it now. And then he puts out the fire, and the whole place is full of smoke. He's like, well, I guess that's it for today. Yeah. It's like, okay. <laughs> um, and then he's putting the, the whole uh, the shaft on the, the socket, and then he's, you know, he's Hammering with in. a piece of wood. He hammering just... with a piece of wood, and then he, he like, it slips, and it hits him in the gut. And he's like, oh, I hit myself in the tummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, I I was laughing so hard when I know. I mean, I know what that probably hurts and right, yeah. it doesn't feel good, but I was laughing so hard when he this guy, this beard bro of mine with all the tattoos right. and this you know burly dude, and he's like, I hit myself in the tummy, tummy. on live TV. He made a joke about it too. He's like, other guys get. You know, cut their fingers off. He's like, oh, yeah, I cut my finger off making this blade. He's like, oh, I hit myself in the tummy. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, I hit myself in the tummy. All right. So that's it. Not much drama. No. Tummy slap. It's okay. <laughs> so then we run into the test. All right. We have the kill test. It's a hanging deer carcass. Big ass deer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And RJ Markaida comes in to do the test. Start off with Nick. Bang, bang, whap, whap, whap. Okay, minor chipping and a rolled edge. Yeah, which and you don't normally see from the kill test, so it must have just been really soft edge. It could be, it. but, you know, he had to go through spine and ribs and shit. And, by the way, this thing, whack, drop. You hear that thud from that, that oh, yeah, the deer carcass. Right, right now. On the, yeah, it was nice. Then we move on to Alex. Um yeah, stab, slash, all that good stuff. Doesn't cut all the way through. I think the blade kind of like slipped a little bit. It looked like it, it turned well, kind of. Yeah, I think what they said was that it was it was very wide in the it handle part. It was a part, wide base, yeah. And so it was harder to control right. so that it didn't get a solid cut through on that last part. Yeah, it did some damage, definitely. Oh, yeah. And it would kill. Yes. It got past the kill test. So then we moved on to what, the strength test? It was, yeah, the strength test, which was the pike, push, and chop, which <laughs> David Baker introduces and then <laughs> does this, and the pikes just go, boom, There's like just fall three, down. There's like three racks of pikes all together, and you just go, clink. It's just and, like, okay. Yeah, the prop guy got a little fancy, I guess, or <laughs> whatever. It's like, okay. Um, so basically all he was doing was he was taking the, the glaives, he was pushing the pikes back up into the right. standing straight up position. Locking them in. And then chopping them. Right. And there was not really any major issues. Nick got through without a problem. Alex, when he did his, he ended up getting some small chips and rolls on his edges from this test, which, again, makes makes sense. It's a harder material, probably, the wood. Um, so 
there's a little bit of damage. But otherwise, uneventful test. They both passed. Yeah. So um, there was one test left. The sharpness test, the rope and bag slice. With everybody's so. favorite, blue sand. Right, right. And so Dave Baker's going to cut the rope, release the bag, and he's going to whack at it. So uh, they passed. Yeah. I mean, there's really not much to it. They both it. did it. Watch it, was... it. You know, it's it's cool. Actually, uh, um, Nick's, I mean, he just, that thing came down and just right through it. And he just looked. Like, it was oh, it was, it was slight. Slow mo uh, was really good. It was very nice. It was yeah. very good cut. Um, so they both passed. So then, when it came down to it, the judges had to just see which one kind of looked the best after all those tests. But none, there was no big issues between either of them. And based on the amount of damage that was there, they ended up giving the win to Nick. Gave it to Nick. Now you know Alex did have the kind of big candle that was part that, that part, was of, that part of it. Yeah. And so, yeah, Nick pulls out the win. Which means... We get points. We get points. We get a single point. One point each, which... So, our updated score, Teresa stays in the lead at 15. I jump a little closer. I have 13 points. Nope. And Sean also jumps a little closer with 10 points. Double digits. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, look that... Out. Look out, Teresa. We're coming for you. We're getting closer. It's a few more episodes left this season, so we'll see what we can do. No to... one cares except us. Yeah. Not... So, I don't think anybody that no. watches this is paying Sorry. attention to the points. This is just our own thing. But anyway, that's the episode. Season 5, episode 17, The Glaive Gisarm. And I'm Chris. This is Sean. We thank hey. you for watching. Please subscribe to the videos. Yes. If you followed us on Instagram because you like to see some of the other interviews and stuff that we did, Hop on over to the YouTube and subscribe to us, too, and build that subscriber count number. We'd really love it. Um, like the videos. Check us out again on Instagram. We're on Twitter, too, but nobody really cares about Twitter, I guess, in the bladesmithing community. Um, and check us out, Fans of the Forge, on Facebook. And we do post occasionally to the Forge and Fire Facebook discussion group. Mm. So that's it. That's the episode. Thanks again for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. Woo, 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 woo. Woo, 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 woo.